Manchester United, the first side to take the field for this all-ticket match at Villa Park. All-ticket at the request of the local police, who in that way have made quite sure that the supporters are segregated after what happened here in the friendly against Glasgow Rangers four weeks ago. So here at the Witten end, the supporters of Manchester United. So as Chris Nicholl leads out Aston Villa, they get the normal thunderous reception from their fans backed high at the Holt end. This is really a match for the supporters as much as for the players, because these surely are two of the most loyal bands of supporters in football anywhere. And the good news for those Villa fans is that two players who had fitness tests this morning have both come through. That's Brian Little, number eight, who was doubtful overnight with flu, and Ray Graydon, number seven, who had a slight pull in the leg and had a fitness test just before the start. So the team is the one which lost at Liverpool last week but was not disgraced. News from Manchester United is that Lou Macari seems to have paid the price for the midweek defeat in Turin. He's been dropped today. Steve Koppel moves to number 10. Chris McGrath comes in for his first full match at number seven, the former Tottenham player. And of course, United are still without their injured captain, Martin Bucker. Manchester United wearing white shirts this afternoon, playing in the first half from right to left. And Sammy McElroy, number eight, who got a touch there, may well find himself playing in midfield in the absence of Makari. This is Graydon for Aston Villa. Alderston. A deep test of United's character this match in view of what happened in midweek. Koppel. To Hill. Taking on John Gidman. Indeed, the last time United's players came back from tiring midweek football, which was at West Brom, we saw them on match of the day three weeks ago, they got beaten 4-0. And that, to date, is their only away defeat in the league. Again, Gray getting up well. And he's there again. Good try. Andy Gray, these days, a huge favourite with the Villa Park fans. Pearson forward for Koppel. McGrath is on that side as well. Linesman's flagging against Houston. Who's clearly got his hands full when he and Andy Gray go up for the high ball. Little came in. Gordon Hill. Alveston coming up outside. Found now by McElroy. Houston. This is McElroy again. This is Graydon. Mortimer. Caradus. Smith has moved well down the left. Cool by Houston. And now a daily. Mortimer, and now Caradus. Busy start, both teams grappling for control in the middle of the field. This is Brian Little for Villa.
That's Gray. Wide for Graydon. Little and Gray waiting in the middle. Little the man that went in first. Pearson. McGrath hasn't seen much of the ball yet, the newcomer. It's Coppola who got caught, and here's Phillips. Properly. Little on the left. chance for Villa because the ball came over Stuart Houston's head and that was virtually a free header for Andy Gray Pearson taking the whack from behind quickly taken free kick by Daly this is Nickel did well Coppel is in the middle number 10 hits the post and Villa there were pulled apart they seemed to lose concentration when Jimmy Nickel got away on the right. They were looking towards the referee, obviously thinking there should have been an earlier decision. And as the ball came across, Steve Koppel flooded his shot against the post with Burridge beat. Phillips. Caradus has made a good run forward but was seen and beaten by McElroy. Here's Phillips. That's meant for Gray. Came to Little. Ron Saunders' message to his two main strikers, Little and Gray, before the match was... Let's be more ruthless around the six-yard box. But so far, anyway, United defending quite well. Referee stopping play to give the free kick when McElroy would rather have gone on. Pearson! So simple. United didn't want the free kick at first, but they've scored from it. Swung across by Hill, and Pearson, unmarked it seemed, got a free header and it beat Burridge to make it 1-0 that's Jimmy Nicol right back for Manchester United and of course Chris Nicol centre half for Villa now Caradas United contesting everything more eagerly perhaps than we've seen for quite some time. Here's Hill. Pearson on for McGrath, who had to turn. Pearson. This is Daly, round the back. Houston. Hill. Good skill. Pearson's in there again. Pearson knowing that he's in the England squad, but he's still got to make sure of his place in the England team. Here's Cropley. Caradus. Gray 
finding Gidman. Little is making a run to the near post now. It's coming back to Gidman. And to Mortimer! Beautiful shot. involved in the attack and when the ball finally came out again from a crowd of players Mortimer let one go and Stepney even at full stretch couldn't prevent that screaming into the corner showing up well. This is Daly to McGrath. Play on. So, Caldas for Villa. Mortimer. Braden. Little, the only man in the box at the moment for Villa. Here's Caradas. again, Gray is coming in <laughs> Stepney certainly felt him <laughs> the end of a good half well appreciated by both sets of supporters United starting well taking the lead through Stuart Pearson but the equaliser coming when it was most needed for Aston Villa from the foot of Dennis Mortimer. Aston Villa didn't have a midweek match, so as we start the second half, it'll be interesting to see in the latter stages in these conditions whether they look the stronger. Here's Little. Caradas going through nicely. Still Caradas. Oh! Daly, Jimmy Nickel, Brian Little, properly going to his left. United have got to hurry back here. Gray is making strides into the area. Houston was right with him. Daly. Greenoff pushing forward, and he may have to do that all the more now. Four white shirts in the centre. Koppel on. Oh, it's come to Hill! Hit the post, it's in! 2-2, Gordon two -two. Hill the scorer. And the conditions played a part in the goal. Looked to me as if John Gidman may have slipped on the mud in that penalty area. Hill with an unexpected shooting chance, which he took with the help of the goalpost. A match which does an awful lot about English football. They talk about English players not having the close skills of the Continentals, but we're playing here, or the players are on a very heavy surface. And it's gripping stuff, this. Full of excitement. Properly. Graydon.
Graydon and Houston. Oh, he turned him well. Gray coming in! Brilliantly taken! Fine header by Andy Gray. And Villa are back in front in this seesaw match by three goals to two. The approach work here done by Graydon. He got round Houston, got his cross hit, and Andy Gray made an awful lot of ground to the far post. He beat Jimmy Nickel in the air, and that's his second goal of the match, and his 15th of the season. And in the 54th minute, it's 3-2 to Villa. The police, by the way, have increased their numbers this afternoon considerably to cope with any trouble. That's a good ball for Brian Little, and Gray is making ground again into the middle, where he can stay now for the corner. Nickel! It was off the line. I suspect it may have been Alviston, and it's in again for Little. Appeal for handball, and the linesman's flag is up but I think he may have given a corner. There was an appeal for handball against Greenoff. The referee looked towards the line, and the linesman has given a corner to Villa, although they thought it should have been a penalty. Nickel was in again there. Nickel, whose earlier header was hooked off the line. Good run by McGrath. Koppel. Three coming in from the far side. Jimmy Nickel. In case you've forgotten the score in a match which seems to change every minute, it's 3-2 to Villa. The game perhaps settling down slightly after that spate of goal scoring and Villa trying to consolidate their lead. Here's Mortimer. In the way was McElroy. Again, Andy Gray, the target, took it well. And brought down by Green on penalty. It looked to me as if the referee was dead right. Andy Gray turning well, turning away from Brian Greenoff. A little trip, over he went, and Mr. Flint had no doubt at all. But Andy Gray doesn't seem as if he's going to go seeking his hat-trick from the spot. It's going to be left to the regular penalty man, Ray Graydon. 68 minutes gone. Oh, he saved it! Graydon not really getting it in the corner. And not enough power either to beat Stepney. Good save. Pearson looking for Hill. Good move. Good try! Paradis. Little, Chris Nickel. Graydon, 3 to a match. Good skill from Jerry Daly. Hill. Not a bad ball either to Koppel. Coming back to Hill! Oh, it was deflected, and they appealed for handball. But it's not been given, a corner has been given. Jerry Daly goes across to the referee, because they feel that Hill's shot struck a Villa player on the arm. It may have done, but the old question again, was it intentional handball? And the referee obviously thought that it wasn't. The pressure, though, is now back on Villa. Well held by 
by Burridge. Shot from McElroy. That's for Graydon, who's got Houston to beat. And Graydon showing good determination. And he gets brought down from behind. And I think the referee will have to give the first yellow card of the afternoon. Jerry Daly is trying to persuade him not to. But I'm afraid that was the classic professional foul from Houston. In that the player had got ahead of him and had got through. And had Houston not done that, Ray Graydon may well have scored. Not sure whether he showed the card or not there. So properly with the free kick for Aston Villa. Gray came in again. Referee's checked his watch. Koppel. Daly finds Jimmy Nickel. Three are waiting in the box. Burridge coming and not making it. And he was saved by Chris Nickel. Villa's hearts in their mouths there right at the end. And still United refuse to budge. Greenoff. A compelling afternoon. Well, Andy Gray was the name that Jock Steen once mentioned to me as the most promising young player in Scotland. How is it that you end up as Villa Park's hero and not at Celtic? Well, probably I think, Jimmy, the reason for that is that Dundee United didn't let me go to another Scottish club. I think that was the main reason. They would rather see me down in England than in Scotland playing against them, I think. A bit of an embarrassment for them? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a bit of an embarrassment now for the clubs, other clubs in England that haven't bored you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm enjoying it down here. I've joined a great club, Jimmy. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. What is it about uh, this club this year that's made them different? I think we're aiming for the top, Jimmy. We've got the players that are... We've got the manager. We're all hungry for success. Aston Villa has been in the doldrums for a little bit too long, and we aim to give it success as soon as possible. Yeah. You've got, personally, what I might call an old-fashioned centre-forward style, which is a bit unusual these days. Who taught you football? Uh, no one, really. Just watching it, I suppose. I've heard that quite often, that old-fashioned centre-forward. Yeah. I, I don't think I'm old enough to have seen an old-fashioned centre-forward, <laughs> Jimmy, so it's a bit strange. <laughs> uh, did you not muddle yourself on anybody? Uh, well, my boyhood idol was really Dennis Law, I suppose. Mm. You know, so, if anyone, him, but I don't think I muddled myself on anyone, really. Mm. You've got his non-stop aggressive attitude of the game. Yeah, well, I've got to. I haven't got all the skill that some players have got, Jimmy, so I've got to keep myself busy. Well, I don't know. A fair bit of skill showed up today. Uh, did you booze Alex Stepney at all when you collided with him? Uh, yes, I think I just caught him, yeah. yeah. It was a 50-50 ball I went for, and I, unfortunately I caught him. Quite an nasty one, I think. Was there any chance of you taking the uh, penalty to no get chance. the hat <laughs> No, I take them in training. They never score in training, so there's no <laughs> chance today. <laughs> <laughs> and what are your ambitions for the future? Uh, well... Obviously, we'd love to be win something really this year. We're on our way, I think, to in the next few years to become a really good side, and maybe in the next couple of years, possibly winning the league championship, and which is the ultimate aim. Got, well, they've taken a little setback just now, Jimmy, and possibly I won't play for a year or so again with my band. Well, we hope the band's over soon. You yeah. certainly entertained everybody today. Thank you very Thanks, much. Jimmy.